Okay. So, now we all know that it is being recorded. So, here we are going to look at all the support that SAP provides for not all the support, some support that SAP provides for the manufacturing module. Now, one thing you have already noticed is that this course is kind of unique in the sense that in this course you are looking at several modules. Okay, we are looking at a number of modules, in fact, a big superset of important modules. Uh, and Professor Chi will tell you that each of these modules has a two month training course. Okay, so what we are really doing is just scratching the surface of the modules. You know, so it is really complex. The underlying modules are really complex, but what we are trying to do is just to hit the highlights of what each module is capable of. Okay, so uh, it is not surprising that there are unresolved questions, some things are not very clear, it is a little ambiguous, uh, you know, th that is the nature of the beast. Okay, so just take that as a, uh, what would you say, a necessary evil in this course. And clearly I myself have not, you know, actually worked on an SAP project at all. My learning of SAP is only through these courses and you know trying to teach using the thing. So it's a little limited. Uh, the depth that would help if I could bring, I cannot. Okay, so that's why some of the questions are not getting answered. Okay, but I don't think that's a serious flaw for the exam point of view. Okay, from a real understanding point of view, yes, of course. Okay, so uh, let's see what we can do. Okay, so in terms of production, SAP supports different types of production. We know that in manufacturing. There are many different types of manufacturing activities that organizations perform. Okay, so one thing you have is uh, discrete manufacturing is what I'd like to call it, right? And which they're calling here as make to order production, order based uh, production using production order, right? But you could be producing even to stock with production order, right? So uh, they're just using that as kind of a catch all there. Uh, in this course, what we are going to focus on is production using a production order. And we are sort of assuming discrete manufacturing, not process or assembly line environment. Okay, so that's one thing that's support and it's probably that's the one that comes closest to uh, the approach that we are taking in this course. Uh, second, of course, is repetitive manufacturing, right, which is uh, somewhat like an assembly line, production line manufacturing which has different characteristics than, uh, than discrete piece by piece manufacturing. Okay, so there you have got a big assembly flow and most of the products are just flowing through uh, certain steps and getting worked on by different people. Okay, so the calculations and the planning and things like that would be different for that approach. We are not going to talk about that in this course, but I guess you should know that such a thing exists and recognize the term when it, when it appears. Okay, sorry. And then you have process manufacturing, which is, you know, chemical process and so on, uh, you know, refineries, those kinds of things. Okay. So that is uh, process manufacturing where there's a continuous flow and the units being manufactured are not discrete, right? So the co common example would be, uh, uh, let's say a refinery where you put in crude oil at one end, it goes through by various pipes at every stage it gets processed and then it flows out in a continuous stream on the other side. Okay. So, once again, the kinds of calculations that are used are uh, quite different and SAP has support for that, but we won't be looking at it. And then there are some situations, for example, like ship building and things like that, where, uh, or aircraft building, things like that, where every unit you produce is huge and each one has significant differences, right? So, it's not repetitive making the same thing over and over again. Everything is a separate project. Lots of complicated, thousands of complicated activities involved in making that particular uh, item. Okay, so that is project-based manufacturing. Okay, which also SAP supports. Uh, we'll be looking at SAP's project management module, but the project-based manufacturing is something a lot more complex than what we look at. Uh, and then finally, there is this thing called Kanban, which is more like how. Uh, you know, it's more like how a production process is controlled, right? In terms of when things flow, it's one way variant you could say of just-in-time uh, production control, and that is also supported by SAP. Once again, we are not going to be looking at any of the details. Okay, so I think from an exam point of view, you just need to recognize that these things are all supported by SAP. Okay, so we'll focus, as I said, on manufacturing using production orders, and production orders. Uh, in fact, we saw that the output of MRP would be a 
a planned order that would get converted into a production order. That's sort of the input point to this module. Okay, so you did MRP, you did the planning and figured out these materials are required uh, for, uh, you know, procurement. And then, of course, you're trying to actually make some end products. And MRP would create, because you said you created a requirement for 500 units of the finished product. Right, so MRP is going to create a planned order for that. In addition to planned orders and purchase orders and so on for lots of other raw materials and so on. Okay, so it will create the pl planned order, which will then convert into a production order and then produce. That is the more typical route. But it's also possible to create a production order directly. It's not necessary that you have to go through this MRP process, create a planned order and then convert it. There could be some situations when you just go in, create a production order and get the work done. Right. So in that sense, a production order, just like uh, you know any other order, like purchase order or sales order or maintenance order, just like any order or transfer order, right? Just like any order, it's the document that initiates the process. Okay. Uh, so production. So the way production might roughly proceed, uh, I'm just trying to motivate the broad steps in production. So you may create a production order, which might be like make 200 bikes, right? How did this order come? It might have come from MRP, you know, through the MRP process where a planned order was created and we converted it. Or we might have just created a production order out of the blue. No matter what, you've got a production order. And the next step, of course, is to get the materials for the production order. Okay, so one assumes that the materials have probably been already procured. They are sitting in stock somewhere in the warehouse. So you need to pick up the materials. Uh, which is the whole goods issue process that will take place for production. And then once you have the material, you have the manufacturing process that goes on using this material. Okay. Now, of course, the production order has first got to be released before anything can be done with it. Okay. So we assume that that process is kind of the release process, you could say. Okay. Now, again, this is just a very brief sketch. We look at the actual process that SAP has shortly. I'm just giving a very broad overview of the steps so that we can ease into the topic a little slowly. Okay, so the manufacturing process takes place. And once the manufacturing process is complete, then of course, you want to tell the system, we are done. We made, we started making 200 bikes, but we were able to make only 198. Two bikes were rejected by quality, etc, etc. Right, and uh, information about how much time got taken, those kinds of things. Okay, so there's the whole process of confirming the production process. Right? Confirmation is the step which lets the system know because the production process is happening outside of the SAP system. It's happening out in the real world. Right? But then of course you've got to take that information, put it into the SAP system for the system to know what actually happened. Right? So that is the confirmation process. Right? So once again you'll see that confirmation is a term that uh, is generally used to uh, enter into the system the completion of something. Okay, so that is confirmation. So, for example, uh, in warehouse management, you will have transfer request that will get become a transfer order. They'll do the people in the warehouse will actually go do the work, and then they'll enter a confirmation saying it's done. Right. So then you know that whatever you ordered it has completed. Okay. So this is also part of the broad process that at the end of production. Somebody will enter the confirmation of production. And once it's confirmed, all the information about what happened during the process is now in the system. Okay, so that is the confirmation process. And of course, once you've confirmed production, you then have got a bunch of finished bikes, right? And then you can then put those into the warehouse. That's the goods, uh, goods receipt that will take place in the warehouse that takes the finished products in. Okay, so this is really a very broad sketch of the whole production process. We'll be looking at uh, some of these steps in a little greater detail as we go forward. Okay, so the organization levels in manufacturing are pretty much the same as in most of the logistics modules. Client, company code, plant and storage location. Okay, those are the main organization elements we are concerned with. And, uh, you know, we've, we've seen this diagram a hundred times by now. Uh, so it's the same thing, the complete hierarchical structure. Okay, and again, we know that storage locations, the numbering of storage locations is a little 
different from the numbering of other things, right? The storage location numbers are not unique within a plant. I mean, they are unique within a plant, but not across plants. So to uniquely identify it, you have to specify both. In some other places where this pops up. Okay, so the master data used in manufacturing are all of these. So we use the material master, of course, and the procurement type for a, for an item that we produce in house in the material master. There's a field called procurement type, and in that field we'll indicate that for a finished item that we make only in house, the procurement type will be in house production. Okay, that's the procurement type for this, right? So that when you run MRP, MRP knows that this material is not something that is bought from outside, it's in-house production and therefore I need to create a planned order for this, which will then get converted into a production order and so on. Okay, so that's an essential information for MRP to do the right thing when it runs. Okay, uh, material for bomb, though once again the controversial single level bomb is there. <laughs> again, you know, they state that in the course material, if you read it, it says sing bombs are maintained as single level bombs. Okay, uh, and then you've got work centers. We'll see work centers in some detail and of course even routing. So work centers are uh, production capacities essentially. So they could be machines, they could be groups of machines. Work centers could be people and it could be groups of people, right? Anything that has production capacity is a work center. Okay, now clearly work center master has information about various things, you know, about the capacity, how much uh, how much of capacity we have, what does it cost to use that work center for a certain amount of time, things like that, right? So the information that is stored in a work center, as we'll see shortly, is the information that is used for, uh, you know, all kinds of cost estimation, scheduling, those kinds of things. Uh, okay, so that is that. And then routings, we've seen the concept of routings, and we just use the term routing here, but uh, time and again, you'll see that because SAP supports different types of manufacturing, okay, so routing, the term routing is actually a specific term of a more generic term called task list, right? Because a routing is nothing but a set of operations that need to be performed. So it, it is a task list. So SAP uses the term task list in a generic sense and routing is the task list used for uh, discrete manufacturing, the kind of manufacturing that we are talking about, okay, uh, manufacturing based on production orders is based on routing, right, but the same thing when you're talking about, let's say, uh, process manufacturing, then the term that they'd use for routing is what is called as a master recipe, okay, or if you're talking about assembly lines, then the same term for the set of operations, they'll call it as rate routing. Okay, so the superordinate term for all of these put together is what is called task list. There are a couple of other things on the task list also, which we'll see later on. So for example, when you're doing maintenance activities, there's a set of things you need to do for maintenance that is also called as a task list. Okay, so all of these are equivalent. So you might see the term routing or you might see the term master recipe in the exam. Mentally, you should think, okay, that's just the set of things that need to get done to make something. That's what it is. Okay, uh, work centers are assigned to operations as we know that, uh, you know, later on we'll see that because we have to indicate for every operation in a routing where it's going to be performed, which work center is going to perform that operation, right? And then of course, we've got PRTs. PRTs are nothing but production resources and tools. Okay, that's a term that crops up quite often, right? Production resources and tools are in production, you're going to do a certain operation. To perform that operation, you may need some tools, right? Which is not part of the bill of material for that material, right? It's not part of the bill of material for the finished product. But in order to perform that activity, you need the tool, right? Now, in a, in a typical production environment, you'll have some tools that are just generic and lying around in the workplace, you know, like hammers, you know, common hammers or uh, you know, other kinds like, you know, for example, dirty cloth to wipe off oil. Those kinds of things will be just lying around that those you don't think treat as production resources and tools. Those are just there as general utilities hanging around the place which you use, right? But PRTs are specialized resources and tools that are required for certain operations. 
right? For example, here they've put an example of a drill here. So maybe for a particular operation to be performed, you need a specialized kind of a drill. Okay, a carbon high speed drill or something like that. I just made it up. Okay, so you might need some specialized sort of a drill and there may not be those lying around everywhere in the company. So when you want to perform that operation, you have to get it specifically for that operation, right? And also you have certain jigs and fixtures, right? That specially made things that will hold the object in a convenient place for you to perform an operation. Okay, so that is a specialized thing. Without that, you can't perform the operation, but it's only a supporting tool. It's not part of the finished product. Okay, so those are the kind of things which are called production resources and tools, PRTs, right? And PRTs uh, obviously will be assigned to individual operations or it might be assigned to the entire uh, you know, entire routing together. Okay, so that's what the concept of PRT is. And of course, uh, you know, you may have a master data of a PRT could include all of these material, equipment, document, other. Document, of course, is back to our good old document system that we spoke about yesterday. Okay, so PRTs are just the tools used in production. Right, so these are all the master data that manufacturing execution uses. Okay, so material master primary views are these. We've seen this slide many times. And these are all the views that manufacturing directly or indirectly uses. Okay, the whole overall manufacturing process from a really broad point of view. But whenever in the slides you might have noticed, they, they, they say the specific views that are maintained for manufacturing are MRP and work scheduling. Right, so these are the two views that are maintained specifically for manufacturing. But many other views obviously are impacted as manufacturing takes place. Okay, bill of material, we've seen this slide a hundred times by now in different contexts. We know what bill of materials are. It's got a header, it's got items, uh, single level, but etc. etc. Okay, we've seen seen this before, and I'm just clarifying between the item quantities and the base quantity. This is just a copy of that other slide. Okay, uh, the structure of a bomb, again, we have seen this before. You've got a header and that determines uh, the usage type, determines the business applications for which the bomb may be used. For example, it could be used for production, it could be used for maintenance, right? And we'll see maintenance bombs later on. And uh, status, whether the bomb is active for specific application. And then we've also discussed this idea that a material can have multiple bombs for various reasons. Okay, the same material could have multiple bombs and in this context of course I just want to remind you about configurable material that we spoke about yesterday. Okay, that's different from a material having multiple bombs. Right, a material having multiple bombs is you've got an actual material but there are many bombs for it. Right, whereas configurable material is completely different. It's a different type of material altogether. Right, and uh, it has a super bomb and a super routing. And when you configure it, you get a bomb and routing, a dynamic bomb and a dynamic routing, right? So that bomb and routing are generated just for that variation that you selected at that point in time. Okay, so that's not the concept of multiple bombs that we are talking about. So don't get, yep. Uh, going back to life cycle, um, the thing configured uh, item, is it set up in the company level or is it set up in a client level? It's a... Uh, Configure, it will be set up like a material. So whatever applies to general materials would apply there. Okay, so like, suppose you are doing it just for heck of it, let's just take a car example, right? You selected it. So will it be a client level or a company level? How will it take out the bomb? I mean, even if you take that bomb, would be having a different bomb, depends upon the company. I mean, one, one company. So you are saying to which unit that bomb will belong? That's really, you might even say it belongs to just that specific order. Okay. It's configured and it's for that special purpose and it will go, you know, it, if it's needed again, it will get generated again. You'll configure it. If, if it so happens that the same things are selected again, it will be regenerated. Okay. So, it's, it's, in fact, one of the names that was given in the slide was also order, order bomb. A dynamic bomb or order bomb it was said. So it's really something that's for that individual use that was that it was created. Okay, and then the items, we spoke about these also, different types of items that are possible. And we gave a more exhaustive list on, on a different slide. 
right? Things like uh, stock item, non-stock item, variable item, document item, etc. Okay, so work centers. This is new master data that we have not 